Yeah, so it's been, I think, three years since I built the original Workstation Slayer PC for the channel back in 2016. And cards on the table, that system wasn't something that I would have really ever recommended someone went out and actually bought for any kind of real world business use. It was built mostly to cheese a benchmark test to show what the 3D CAD software Autodesk Inventor and the likes of Fusion 360 really need from a workstation and that was high clock speed. So that system only had two cores, it only had eight gig of RAM, but it was absolutely spectacular at the benchmark test, which would have made it great for sort of entry level 3D CAD stuff, but beyond that, not much else. But it outperformed systems 10 times the cost. But three years has gone by since then. That system's well out of date now. You can't buy the parts anymore. And in 2019, you can get an absolute mental system for about $650 to $800, which is, it's a spectacular time to be doing this. So there's competition in areas of the market now where there was none three years ago. Uh, there's the prices of components have come right the way down, especially for RAM, especially for solid state drives. And the, the level of performance you can get at this price point is absolutely insane. And if you're looking to build a system, now is the best time. So that's what I've done. Workstation Slayer 2.0 for 2019 has been purchased and it has been built. All the parts here, I have bought them myself. I'm obviously not a channel like mine. I'm not sponsored or endorsed by any component or PC vendors. So I've built and bought all of these parts myself. And this is what I've ended up with. What? 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 All right, mate, let's take a look at the parts that have went for for Workstation Slayer 2019 and do it quick because it's sweltering in here and my skin's beginning to leak. So the CPU is the AMD Ryzen 5, 3600, six cores, 12 threads on the new Zen 2 architecture, 3.6 base clock, 4.2 turbo clock. Motherboard is the MSI B450M Gaming Plus Micro ATX motherboard. RAM is a HyperX Predator 16 gig kit at 3200 megahertz. The solid state drive is a Western Digital Blue half a terabyte M.2 PCI Express NVMe based solid state drive. Graphics card is a Sapphire branded but it can be any really and it's an Radeon RX 580 8 gig variant. Power supply is Corsair VS650 650 watt non-modular power supply and the case is the Inwin 301 micro ATX case. And one thing that I've added after the fact, the CPU, the Ryzen 5 3600, does come with a stock cooler, but it's not the best. It's fine for just running stock frequencies. But if you want to run a slight overclock or if you're doing renders all day, you might want to go for a better cooling system. So I've spent an extra $60 and I've bought a single radiator AIO cooler. And it's the Corsair H80. It's actually an old one that I had lying around, but you can still buy them. So that my parts list exact puts it up to around $800. Without the cooler, it's around $770. But you can get the exact same performance, the exact same specification for $650 or so. Um, I'll put both parts lists on screen so you can take a look at those. Everybody ready? What? What? I mean, I tried. I tried to make it look good, but it's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. For the price point, not bad. But that's not really what we care about around here. It's how it performs. So I'm going to show you some performance results from the Workstation Slayer machine. Bear in mind, though, that I'm not the kind of channel that has a full, extensive, scripted, methodical benchmark testing suite with a massive range of workstations, all ambient control tests, that kind of stuff. I don't have the resource for that kind of thing. So I'm just going to run it on a couple of basic applications, compare it against my 8700K main daily 
rig and then that should give you an idea of how it will perform on most applications that we care about. So we're going to start with Autodesk Inventor and the Inventor Bench Test. So this is a test that I've used quite extensively over the years in my 8700K machine. It pulled an 11.87. So this test startup model does some basic modeling, a rebuild, graphical tests, save tests and drone computation tests and then it takes an average of the times and then gives you an IPI and Inventor Performance Index rating at the end of it and my rig pulled an 11.87 uh, with an overclock and a couple of tweaks, shutting down services, all that kind of stuff, I can get my score up to around 13-ish, sometimes into the 14s if I go for a, a hella overclock. But 11.87 is usually what you get on average for about an 8700K. And the Workstation Slayer at stock pulled a 12.29, which is absolutely outstanding. For this price point to get a 12.29 uh, on Inventor is incredible. So the graphic scores are sky high. Drawing comp I mean, I'm just listing off the scores individually. It goes without saying, if you pull in a 12.29, which is up there with the best workstations that we've ever tested on this benchmark test. What a machine, mate. What an absolute screamer of a result. Blown my 8700K out of the water, and that has wiped the floor with almost every other workstation we've ever seen tested in this benchmark test. And then moving on to a very much synthetic test, Cinebench. So my 8700K on the multi-threaded Cinebench R20 test scored 3,118 points with the workstation Slayer pulling an absolute cracking 3,507 points in the multi-threaded test, meaning that pound for pound all cores, the Ryzen 5 3600 indeed smashes the 8700K at the all cores test, at least this test anyway. Now for a single threaded score, the 8700K pulled 440 points in Cinebench R20 single core test, where then the 3600 scored a 476. Indeed, single threaded performance. The Ryzen 5, this is, bear in mind, this is not a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9, this is just the Ryzen 5 is beating out the 8700K at single threaded workloads, synthetically anyway, which is just stellar, mate. <laughs> what, a, what a machine. What a machine. Right, the V-Ray test. Now this is GPU bound and indeed the, the GPU is the weak point in the Workstation Slayer. That goes without saying. My main rig is a 2080 Ti, whereas the Workstation Slayer has an RX 580 uh, with plenty of VRAM. But in terms of a graphical power, the Workstation Slayer will be lacking somewhat. So for the V-Ray GPU test, my main rig finished that test in 48 seconds to render the scene on the GPU, whereas the Ryzen 5 machine with the RX X580 took three minutes and nine seconds. It's barely even comparable. But don't forget, I didn't spec the Workstation Slayer to be a powerhouse in the GPU department. It was for Autodesk 3D CAD, which aren't GPU accelerated applications. So I was fine with that. As long as the VRAM is more than enough, we are good, mate, and it is good. Right, so the V-Ray CPU test, uh, we had the A700K finishing that in one minute and 33 seconds with the 3600 finishing it in one minute and 25 seconds. Another win for the 3600 at CPU workloads over the 8700K. Now the next test is something that I've not done before on the channel, but it is the Revit graphics certification test provided by Autodesk. This is what the likes of Dell, HP, Lenovo, MSI, Asus, all the main PC vendors and hardware component vendors use to certify their hardware with various 3D CAD applications. So I ran this Revit test on both both machines. Uh, unfortunately, I can't validate the results to give it a pass or a fail to see whether it's certified or not, now, nor am I actually even qualified really to say that this machine is Revit certified. I wouldn't do that if I could, but I'll t I timed how long it took each test to finish with the 8700K completing all the Revit certification tests in 12 minutes and 7 seconds with the Ryzen 5 3600 completing all the tasks in 12 minutes and 1 seconds. So it's pretty even keel there, but you can see that in the same league mate the same league and then we moved on to the Autodesk Inventor graphic certification test which works in the same way as Revit does it goes through a series of image creation sequences spinning cameras drawing lines that kind of stuff and I timed how long it took each of the tests to finish so on my 8700k machine with the RTX 2080 Ti the test suite took 121 seconds to complete whereas the 3600 with the RX 580 
took 93 seconds to complete the tests. So all in all, the 3600 again came out on top, the Autodesk Inventor certification tests. And the final test that I did was an Autodesk V-Red render, which was taking a Bugatti Chiron and then rendering that from zero to 100 passes. And the 8700K completed the render in two minutes and 27 seconds, whereas the 3600 finished it in two minutes and 40 seconds mate so the 3600 isn't top dog for autodesk vred but i've had a word with some people on the development team of autodesk vred and it's something to do with instruction sets that autodesk vred uses and there you have it mate workstation slayer 2.0 for 2019 is concluded and what a build mate what an absolute cracker amd are firing on all cylinders mate 650 to 800 dollars is getting you an absolute mentalist system that can keep up with even the highest spec workstations for our 3D CAD applications. Again, I'm, I'm trying to be careful not to say, oh, you know, it's going to compete with the 10,000 workstations for, for Max and Maya. It's not the case. It's for the applications that we care about, Autodesk Inventor, Revit, the likes of Fusion 360 as well, which I was going to test but the, unfortunately the certification test for Fusion 360 at the moment doesn't work. So I've put a call into Autodesk to get a new version of that. So I will be testing this uh, against the certification suite on Fusion 360 when that test comes through, but you can pretty much take it as, as gospel that if something's good for Autodesk Inventor, it's good for Fusion 360. So yeah, I actually recommend this rig. If you're looking to buy a system on the cheap and you, you don't really want to lose out on a lot of performance and you want to be able to keep up, this is a hell of a system, mate. NVMe storage for fast read writes. You've got what looks like an absolute powerhouse of a CPU with six cores, fast clock speeds with that 3600. You've got okay graphics performance with the RX 580. It will be VR compatible and I will be using this system with VR to show you what kind of performance you'll get out of it. But with eight gigs of VRAM, mate, you're not gonna be having any issues at all with Autodesk Inventor and the likes of Fusion 360 and even Revit. You're not gonna exceed eight gig of VRAM at any point with those programs. Also 16 gig of system RAM, DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. 16 gig is probably the sweet spot for most people if you run in any high-end data sets massive data sets you'll want to go up to 32 or even 64 gigs of ram but for 16 you're not going to run out of ram doing normal operations and you're not going to have too much either so that's the sweet spot overall mate this build is the absolute sweet spot for price to performance for 3d card in my opinion but you can do a bit of give and take in the parts the case i went for a bit of an expensive case the cooler does need to be water cooled if you want to keep your, your cpu at stock speeds which all the tests were done at by the way if you're thinking about that all the tests were done at stock speeds on the 3600 so there you have it mate workstation slayer 2.0 for 2019 is an absolute beauty i'll link in the description to all of the parts on amazon if they're available through my affiliate link which massively supports the channel also thank you very much to all my patreon supporters without them it wouldn't have even been possible to buy this rig i had to buy it obviously myself and that's funded through patreon so thank you to those guys do support the channel if you feel that you want to see more stuff like this and you want to see this machine tested in the future on various different applications uh, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see and i will keep that in mind mate thank you very much that's all i've got and i'll see you in the next one Toodle.